buying when you find a deal, get on the sidelines. The ability to diversify brand new depreciation schedule because we're a separate tax code. So what are the biggest differences between 1031 exchanges and a DST then? Yeah, so the biggest biggest challenge with the, with the, with the 1031 exchange has to do with the fact that you have to buy within a short time period. So uh, for the listeners who may not know about the 1031 exchange, you're basically selling a piece of investment real estate for like kind of investment real estate, and you have to do it within 180 days. And you have to identify within 45 days those potential properties you're going to move on. But what, what our parents taught us to do is to sell high and buy low not sell high and buy higher 180 days later. Unfortunately, that's what the 1031 often forces individuals to do, right? And so we're seeing in this marketplace right now, this, this really, really highly appreciated marketplace. And then you're seeing lack of inventory and you're seeing a lot of, it's tough to find value add deals, especially where we're located here in California. It's very, very difficult. So uh, the key is to sell high and buy it any time, and that's where the deferred sales trust really shines. We call this optimal timing. Optimal timing is buying when you find a deal, not letting uh, the tax tail, you know, it kind of uh, wave the, the the dog, the main part of the dog's body here. You want to make sure that you're buying a deal based upon the intrinsic value, not just to defer the tax. And that's where the deferred sales trust we can now park the funds there, sit on the sidelines and wait until you find a deal. And which leads into the second thing, which has to do with debt. So part of the 1031 exchange, you have to buy equal or greater value. And when you buy equal or greater value, it often means taking on equal or greater debt. And so, for example, uh, you sell a $10 million property and you have $5 million of debt. You need to buy equal or greater value, 10 million or more. Oftentimes, it means you're taking, let's say, even a couple more million dollars. Now you're $7 million in debt. Now, if you can find a deal that makes sense and it, 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 the, the value is there and you have forced appreciation, great, buy it by all means. But too often, people are buying and overpaying for properties. When I call, I call this taking on dumb debt where you're buying it just to defer the tax. And so the solution is to actually get out of debt when the market's highly appreciated, right? Get on the sidelines. And that's where the deferred sales trust is the solution in that you can just sell, pay, pay off all the debt and just move the proceeds into the trust. And now the proceeds can be invested into whatever you want, which leads into the third part of the deferred sales trust. You can put it into unlike kind properties. You can put it into stocks, bonds, mutual funds. You can do it into commercial lending. You can do it into a new business venture. You don't have to be stuck within just uh, investment real estate. So we call this the ability to diversify, right? Get out of debt and get liquid and buy whenever you want. So those are, those are some of the main reasons that you would consider a deferred sales trust over the 1031. And the last one would be the depreciation schedule. So some of the listeners who are listening to this, this show right now, you may have owned multifamily for 27 and a half years. Now depreciation is one of the number one reasons to own investment real estate because it allows you to offset all of the income that's coming in or a portion of the income that's coming in um, uh, versus taking it all and paying tax. Okay. But it, it, but if you wait too long, eventually you fully depreciate it. If you've done 1031s for too long, you, you don't, you run out of depreciation because in a 1031, the depreciation schedule travels, which is not good. You want more depreciation. So the intent is to get more depreciation. The challenge is the 1031 exchange doesn't allow you to have more because it's because the, the basis is traveling. The solution is the deferred sales trust and that you can buy the exact same property that you would have bought via 1031, but you have a brand new depreciation schedule because we're a separate tax code. It is not a 1031 exchange, 1031 exchange. So we have different benefits to these uh, uh, to our tax deferral strategy.